Purpose. To reveal the full identity of Christ and to give warning and hope to believers. Because of the description in Revelation of Christian martyrs and a beast who demands worship, 13 colon 1 e 8, many readers of Revelation have assumed that the cities to which the Apostle John wrote were being severely persecuted. Indeed, these communities were experiencing some persecution. John himself had been exiled to Patmos for preaching the gospel, 1 colon 9, and Antipar in Pergamum had been put to death for his adherence to Christ, 2.13. Nero was the first Roman emperor to persecute Christians. Yet his persecution of Christians was local and not empire-wide. Nero blamed the Christians in Rome for the devastating fire that had destroyed much of the city. It wasn't until the reign of Domitian, AD 81-96, that refusing to worship the Roman emperor became a punishable offense throughout the empire. Before that time, emperor worship had been spreading throughout the Roman empire but hadn't been enforced. But even with the decree that all should worship him as God and Lord, there isn't much evidence from Domitian's reign of widespread persecution of Christians. Most of the persecution of Christians in the first century consisted of local challenges to specific groups of believers. Out of the seven churches addressed in Revelation, John encouraged only three, Smyrna, Pergamum, and Philadelphia, to endure suffering and persecution. This book seems to be more concerned about false teaching, sexual immorality, divisions within congregations, lack of love for God and others, and complacency toward the things of God. The greatest threat to these churches was internal, not external, the spread of false teaching and spiritual compromise. 2 colon 14 is 16, 20 to 22, 3 colon 4, 15 to 17. So revelation wasn't necessarily addressed to a persecuted minority. Instead, it was a wake-up call to a complacent, compromising church. Revelation highlights the unseen realities that these congregations were ignoring. Vivid and terrifying visions illustrate a furious battle between good and evil, a battle of which the eventual outcome has been already determined. Ultimately, God will win. The only question was whether the members of these churches would be on God's side or on Satan's side. The answer to this question was a matter of life and death. See, Nature of the Book This is an Apocalypse, 1.1, that is, a book that deals with eschatological matters, events that take place at the end of human history. There are apocalyptic passages elsewhere, such as Daniel 7-12, and Mark 13 and parallels, but this is the one biblical book that is thoroughly apocalyptic. The first part, the letters to the seven churches, serves as an introduction to the book. The message is presented in a series of visions, which include bizarre events and places, and unusual figures, celestial, human, and animal, all of which are symbols that represent some person, or event that relates to the life and destiny of first-century Christians in an important way. The translator should keep firmly in mind that, above all, this book was meant to meet the spiritual needs of its immediate readers. This implies that most, if not all, of the symbols and figures were understood by them. Modern translators, however, are far removed from those first readers and cannot be certain that they understand all the seer's visions. There are various interpretations, some understand the book to be referring to things of the past, others, to the time of the writer or to the time from the writer to the end of history, others take the book to refer completely to the time of the end, that is, the end of human history. All these interpretations depend in some measure on how 1.19 and 20.1 to 8 are understood. On the other hand there have been those who have seen the book as pure allegory, without any relation to a particular period in human history, but very few take this position nowadays. Whatever may be the interpretation preferred, full force must be given to the author's insistence that the things he is describing will take place soon, 1.4, 22.7, 10, 12, 20. Regardless of the interpretation adopted, it seems quite evident that chapters 2 to 3 have to do with the things that are now, and chapters 4 to 22 with the things that will happen afterward, 